so i hope uh, uh, you uh, the screen is visible and i am audible yes, yes sir okay okay so uh, on the first day of my lecture uh, i discussed uh, uh, something about uh, this uh, uh, measure so uh, especially in science what uh, the philosophy is that when you can measure what you are speaking about and uh, express it in numbers mm -hmm. you know you know something about it okay but when you cannot express it in numbers your knowledge is a, is a meager it means very small in amount and unsatisfactory kind so that is what uh, the motive the quotes uh, behind that we should go for this uh, fact analysis lord kelvin was the man who have given the statement so uh, this is what science is all about uh, whether, whether it is a medical science agricultural science uh, even if uh, we are doing uh, anything in the economics or in marketing we want to uh, convert the a concept uh, into numerical values that is what uh, research is all about so as i already discussed that uh, this uh, measurement uh, uh, is the process of systematically assigning numbers to the concept or to the process uh, which are under study uh, so that we can compare so that we can compare that in which in which group in which circumstances the measurements are high and in which circumstances the measurement are low so uh, that is what uh, already i have spoken of that when you can measure what you are uh, thinking of uh, what you are speaking of uh, in numbers you know something about it uh, but uh, 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 all the physical and or observable quantities like uh, height weight mass uh, um, all these uh, are uh, observable and uh, we have got uh, uh, standard international units to measure them uh, but still uh, but uh, when you cannot express uh, the concept in numbers your knowledge is of unsatisfactory and to make it satisfactory to make it uh, uh, admissible into the scientific community you have to do research uh, and usually unobservable or latent variable that are not directly observable to us such as the intelligence and personality of uh, a employee then uh, uh, it become difficult you simply say that this person is very intelligent or you can say mr x is uh, more intelligent than mr y the question is uh, can you quantify the intelligence level how much it is he is intelligent than the uh, mr x is intelligent than y so if you can convert the if you can measure the intelligence of a person in numbers then only you can answer such question okay so uh, first of all this intelligence the iq level of the person was uh, measured with the help of factor analysis in stat 6 so what is the summary is that measurement is not an easy job uh, and the world is abundant with immeasurable things that's why we all are doing research we all are working on it that how we can do that so today uh, uh, this factor analysis will uh, help you to measure such unobservable or latent variable which are sitting over there but before that uh, i will like to discuss a few concept uh, which are uh, which will be used in uh, today's uh, this theory session uh, 
so oh, one is variable and uh, this variable is nothing but what i discussed is data so when you measure something i told you on the very first day that the need of statistics is when when you measure something and you get the data and the data are different it have got the variation so because variation is there that's why we need statistical calculation so i quote variation is the mother of uh, statistics so this variable is something which varies from person to person for example height if you take the height of uh, student of your class so this height it it will if it is represented by say x1 is equal to height and say there are Hundred students in the class, so obviously there will be hundred heights and heights in centimeter. I am saying, so there will be height. One student is of height one fifty six, one seventy two, one thirty five. In this way, this is the height of the students. Okay, so this is actually this is actually termed as a variable. Okay, now this variable. i am saying that it have got the second term is the variance so i tell you what is variance variance is nothing but it is squared distance from mean and then you take the average of it average square distance from the mean so what does it mean you just simply take the average of all these 100 uh, observation so it will nothing but add up all these and divide it by 100 say it comes out to be 140 cm i am represented in by x1 bar so the mean of the height of 100 student is 140 cm so this variance is nothing but uh, i am saying uh xi minus x bar means 156 minus 140 172 minus 140 and then take a square okay so you take the distance and then you square it okay so what actually it is doing it is nothing but uh x i minus x bar into x i minus x bar two times because i am writing square instead of writing square i am writing it this into this divided by n so this is variance okay so this is you can term that that this measures how much variability is there into the height means how much all these data sets are deviated away from the mean now there is one more term and that term is named as covariance now what is covariance so variance actually measure the variability uh, in a single data say suppose you have got x1 yeah x is height and another variable y it is weight now you want to measure the joint variability of this x and y so it is it will be measured in terms of covariance so for x1 you will have again height you will again have uh, x1 x2 x100 so 100 values will be for height similarly y1 y2 y100 100 values will be for y okay so what will be the covariance covariance will be nothing here what you did xi minus x bar again into xi minus x bar here what you have to do xi 
x x1 minus x bar into y1 minus y bar x2 minus x bar into y2 minus y bar similarly uh, मल्टीप्लाइंग इट एंड समिंग इट सो इट विल बी वन अपॉन एन समेशन एक्स आई माइनस एक्स बार एंड वाई आई माइनस वाई बार so what we are doing in variance xi minus x bar into xi minus x bar and what we are doing in covariance so it is termed as covariance between x and y it is xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar divided by 1 by n so it gives you an idea what is the joint variability of two var two variable in the data okay so uh, once you uh, have uh, got it so now i will be discussing one more term what is this uh, variance covariance matrix okay so this variance covariance matrix is uh, nothing but say uh, in a data set because factor analysis is, is uh, dealing with the p dimensional data set p means uh, uh, it can be 10 it can be 15 so let us we have a p dimensional data set so what is the meaning of this p dimensional data set that you have got x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 okay so there are you can say again 100 student and this x1 is marks of math math science social studies hindi and english okay let these are the marks of these 100 student okay so this uh, x1 so mark all the first student mathematics marks 60 80 like this 72 science marks 72 99 84 okay and similarly uh, the marks in social studies uh, 54 62 81 92 91 89 like this uh, the marks in this uh, 82 63 and 91 so you can see that this is a data set okay this is a data set so now what i am i am trying to say that this data set x is like this and i will be writing it that it is composed of five variable variable i discussed in the previous slide this is composed of five variable where x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 mathematics marks science marks social studies marks hindi marks so what then again what is the mean vector mean of all these so if you'll take the mean of mathematics marks here add all these and divide it by 100 so it will be represented by mu1 mu2 mu3 mu4 and mu5 so average here you will get mu1 here you will get mu2 here you will get mu3 mu4 and mu5 so it can be summarized like this mean vector mu and we have now variance covariance matrix so now what is this variance covariance matrix so as i told you that this x1 so there will be the variance of x1 so it will be represented by sigma 11 there will be the variance of x2 okay so it will be represented by sigma 12 similarly variance of x3 it will be represented by sigma 13 so all these have got variance uh, 
I will share uh, the PPT when the session will be over because I'm writing in this PPT. Okay, so don't worry about that. Now, what is variance covariance matrix? So I am writing it down. It is represented by this. And here it will be sigma 1, 1. Now, what is sigma 1, 2? Sigma 1, 2 is the covariance between x1 and x2. What is sigma 1, 3? Sigma 1, 3 is the covariance between x1 and x3. Similarly, sigma 1, 4, sigma 1, 5. Then sigma 2, 1. Sigma 2, 2, Sigma 2, 3, Sigma 2, 4, Sigma 2, 5. And similarly, if you write on Sigma 5, 1, Sigma 5, 2, Sigma 5, 3, Sigma 5, 4, and Sigma 5, 5. So you can see in the diagonal, we have got the variance component. And in the off diagonal, we have got covariance component. So this variance, this is termed as variance covariance matrix. Okay, now why I am telling because factor analysis is going to depend upon this variance covariance matrix a lot. So you should have an idea that what actually variance covariance matrix, matrix is. So variance, it measures the variability in a variable. Covariance measures the variability between two variables. For example, this sigma 1, 2, it measures the joint variability of x1 and x2. Sigma 5, 2, it measures the joint variability of x5 and x2. Okay, so this is termed as covariance between x5 and x2. Now, with these uh, notation, uh, with these uh, concept, now I'm moving to this uh, term. What is the factor analysis? So, uh, uh, let us say, uh, let us say that uh, there is a uh, factor, there is a, or you can say latent variable, or you can say un o b s e r v a unobservable quantity okay say there is a, a a a person have the nature of taking risk in his life he is a risk taking in nature okay so this is actually the factor uh, which is uh, uh, not directly observable but because of this factor there will be something which will be the manifest which is observable because of this factor what is the that he he might be rule breaker okay he might be find So, because he is the risk taking, and uh, he 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 might be taking a loan, lot of loan because he is going to take the risk into the market. So this risk taking behavior is there, and there because of this we have got some manifest variable. Yeah. and this variable will be observable. This variable is the observable variable. Now, since these variable observe, so with the help of this variable, with the help of factor analysis, can we measure the hidden factor? So that is the uh, that is the idea behind doing the factor analysis. That, uh, for example, in the previous uh, uh, example, I uh, was uh, discussing that you can see that there are five subjects. 
okay there are five subjects so a student usually you people might have observed a student who is very good at uh, his mathematical and uh, science that student may not be as good as in hindi and english and or social studies okay so student he may be uh, because of his hidden factor okay so there are uh, you can say uh, uh, there are you can say that there are hidden factor of the student A student can be of uh, uh, there are uh, the factor or the latent or unobserved quantity whether the student is of uh, numerical ability and another hidden factor is you can say uh, numerical ability other hidden factor is uh, literature ability you want to uh, you want to measure this uh, numerical ability and literature ability of the student so this is this is not directly observable so but because of these uh, hidden uh, factors the marks of the student which are observable variable hai na these are observable variable marks in mathematics marks in science marks in social studies marks in hindi and marks in hindi and there may be another uh, some more uh, uh, marks also so because of these uh, uh, hidden factor it will manifest into observable variable okay so those uh, x1 x2 x3 x5 those are observable variable now can these observable variable how can these observable variable variable will be used to measure the hidden factor so that is done with the help of factor analysis so this is the uh, this is the you can say diagrammatic idea behind doing the factor analysis okay now now as i told uh, that uh, if Dr. Anup, Dr. Anup, there is no audio. Hello, Dr. Anup.
the participants please wait we are correcting this technical issues hello hello Yes, अब हो गया सर हो गया हो गया थैंक यू सर हो गया अब हो गया हेलो सो आई थिंक नाउ इट इज ओके आई एम ऑडिबल यस यस सर ओके सर सुन पा रहे हैं so ye from up to uh, this slide you people are uh, you are understand why it was uh, what i was speaking in this slide no so sir previous I... slide only sir please yes, this slide please. once again you please can start explain. from the beginning of this slide this slide uh, is uh, you i this slide I'm is not... over this slide over, is here okay, okay. the next slide you start from the beginning okay, we lost thanks. you right from your first uh, column okay 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 thank you so now what uh, i was uh, discussing in this slide was that uh in this uh, th that now the notation will be something like this if i will be writing xp it means uh, we have uh, measured p component uh, of a particular uh, process if it, it can be marks of the student it can be weight height uh, skull circumference arm length of the patient it can be various blood parameters of the patient so we have measured p component so this will be represented by now xp x1 x2 xp and uh, the similarly the mean vector mu it will be represented by mu1 mu2 mu p and as i previously discussed 
variance covariance matrix so this sigma 1 1 actually represents the variability in x1 and sigma 1 2 represents the covariance between x1 and x2 what is the joint variation between x1 and x2 so now the next very important uh, thing that we have to understand now consider that there are m unobservable latent variable and i am writing is consider that there are m factors okay which are uh, there and i am writing it now by fm so there are m factors f1 f2 fm and these m factors are actually causing these uh, x1 x2 xp just like the previous uh, so these are observable things and these factors are not observable so i want to find the relationship between these two okay so now what is the idea behind is that so i am saying that i have got x1 x2 and say x5 just for example marks of five subject okay so i am taking here in this example i am taking p is equal to 5 and m is equal to 2 just for example and we have f1 and f2 okay now what i am assuming that because of this uh, factor 1 is causing something contributing something to uh, x1 and again this factor f2 is causing something to x1 okay so what i am writing i am writing is like it is lambda 11 and lambda 12 it is measured in terms of lambda 11 and lambda 12 similarly factor f1 is uh, contributing something to x2 like this so i am writing is like lambda 21 lambda 22 and ah. lambda lambda 51 and lambda 5 okay So the voice so, is scrambling. No, my, my voice is clear right now or not? Right now it's clear, right, right. Okay, okay. Thank okay. you. So now what I'm saying that this factor f1 and f2, this factor f1 is uh, contributing to x1. So it will be represented by lambda one one, and factor f two is also contributing something to x one. So it will be represented by lambda one two. Similarly for uh, x two, lambda two one, lambda two two, and similarly for x five, lambda lambda five one and lambda five two. So it will be something like this. Okay. So now what I'm saying that. somebody is uh, on mute he they have to mute somebody's okay so now what i'm saying that this x1 this x1 sir sir if, sir please sir yes sir yes. admin sir request hai sir ki baki log ko are mute kar de
no this is a very important concept because uh, what i'm saying uh, what i'm saying that again there are x1 x2 and uh, xp observable uh, variables okay and yes Kattanu. yes please, please ask the uh, audience participants to mute themselves but they are disturbing audience please mute yourself please participants please mute yourself tejas jay shankar is speaking uh, it's coming from some tejas so whoever the host is he can uh, yeah now it's okay so now what i was saying that x, uh, x1 x2 and xp these are the p observable quantity and f1 f2 fm these are unobservable factors so now this f1 is contributing to something to this F, x1 f2 is also contributing and similarly fm is also contributing so what i am saying it is contributing lambda 1 1 lambda 1 2 and lambda 1 m so now i am writing it like this x1 it can be how i am how mathematically i am trying to make a relationship between observable x1 and observable unobservable factors it can be written as mu1 plus factor loading due to factor due to factor 1 factor loading on 1 due to factor 2 and similarly factor loading on 1 due to factor m but still there will be something which is which cannot be contributed by all these factors so that will go into the error term and that is represented represented by delta 1 so what is saying that still this x1 delta 1 part is something which cannot be measured by all these factors okay so again these x1 x2 are the marks of the student and this f1 f2 fm are the ability of the student mathematical ability or his uh, analytical ability like this so these are unobservable what i did marks of the mathematics how much mathematics how much this uh, ability is contributing in getting marks in mathematics how much uh, another ability is contributing getting marks in mathematics like this so this is what uh, a mathematical equation is similarly for x2 we can write down mu2 plus now how much f1 is contributing to x2 how much f2 is contributing to x and how much fm fm is the mth unobservable so it will be represented by lambda 21 lambda 22 and lambda 2m so it was the lambda 2 1 f1 plus lambda 2 2 f2 plus lambda 2 m f m plus the error term delta 2 and again i i will write it down for uh, last so it can be mean vector mu p mean of mu p plus lambda p1 f1 means how much f1 is contributing uh, mu is the mean vector mean of xpth observation means mean of mathematics math mean of physics math these these are the mean for first variable this is mean of pth variable like this and then lambda p2 f2 contribution of second factor on the pth like this lambda pm fm plus delta p so this is how the relationship between observable and unobservable quantities are being established to write it down in terms of uh, matrix notation 
to simplify it i will be writing it log down there are p uh, observable quantities and it is written at like this mean vector of all these observable quantities plus factor loadings these are the factor loadings multiplied by factors f1 f2 fm plus the error term so plus the error term and that is delta 1 delta 2 delta m and to further summarize it this is written as x is equal to mean vector mu plus factor loading matrix lambda plus latent variable factors this and so this can be written as x minus mu which is equal to now this actually is termed as factor model this is termed as factor model now you can see that how beautifully uh, with the, the if you people not have i thought you people might have gone through the regression um, yesterday but this is actually the regression equation between the observable quantity between the observable quantity and in unobservable quantity so this is a uh, this model is termed as factor model okay so now what uh, uh, is uh, very important for all of us to understand at this particular point of time is now that uh, how these uh, uh, factor uh, which uh, i was discussing right now that it is termed as exploratory e x p l o r a t exploratory factor analysis because with the help of this model x1 x2 xp i am saying i am exploring that what are the hidden factors i am exploring so audio video both has stopped has it stopped for others yes yes yeah. it is stuck yes yes, yes. Yeah. yes sir it's like paused Maybe some net issue. I don't know. Dr. Anup, Dr. Anup, can you hear me?
Admin can tell us what is admin. We are trying. There is some technical issue. We are sorting this one. Please, please wait. Please wait. Okay. Thank you, sir. Dr. Anup, can you hear me? Dr. Anup, are you there? <laughs> Dr. Anup, are you there? Yes, yes, sir. I'm there, sir. Kindly allow me to share the screen. Yeah, your screen is visible. No, no. I don't know why it is happening uh, again and again. Okay, now, uh, yeah, okay. actually I was discussing about uh, confer uh, exploratory factor analysis and confirmatory factor analysis. So in exploratory factor analysis, we don't know how many factors, hidden factors are there. We are exploring them. But in confirmatory factor analysis, the uh, PI or the evaluator already know how many factors are there. So today we will be fo focusing upon this uh, exploratory factor analysis. That is what uh, uh, I have discussed. Okay. So this exploratory factor analysis, it is also termed as orthogonal factor analysis because in this case, we say that this F1, F2, FM, they are independent. Sir, this but, slide we missed due to connectivity issue. Can you repeat, please? Yes, I, I can repeat, no problem. So, uh, just, uh, I think this factor model I've explained. Yes, this yes, part is clear. Yes, completed. Yes, yes, of yes. the slide which has exploratory and confirmatory, you were started with the exploratory part. The confirmatory part was not done. Okay, so I will be just repeating right. that slide again. Okay, right. So this uh, this actually this model is termed as factor model because it establishes a relationship between observable quantity and this unobservable quantity. Okay, now uh, the software or there are various techniques to solve this equation in a statistic. So that will go very mathematical. So I will not go into that. But at least you should know that how this relationship is being established. Okay. Now, what is exploratory factor analysis? The, all we have got some observed x1, x2, xp, and with the help of this, I don't know how many how many unobservable quantities are there. I am exploring the unobservable quantities. So this is termed as exploratory factor analysis. One of the very important assumption in this exploratory factor analysis is that all these unobservable factors are independent. They are not, there is no uh, relationship between these F1 and F2. They are independent. For example, the mathematical ability and the uh, literature ability of the student, these two are independent trait of the student. Okay, if such things are there, then we are saying that this is the exploratory factor analysis. But if there is a relationship between these factors, if they are not independent, if they are dependent, if they are dependent, then the factor analysis is termed as oblique, O-B-L-I-Q-U-E, oblique factor analysis when there is a relationship between these factors then we say that this is oblique factor analysis sometimes the pis know that factors are there and factors are also uh, related to each other so such uh, with if we'll uh, proceed with such assumption then it is termed as oblique factor analysis 
What is confirmatory factor analysis? Before conducting the factor analysis, PI knows that I have got only three factors. I have, I have only three hidden factors and, and the, you have to search that which variables are associated with these three factors. Just uh, if this analysis, if you are going to do, so this is confirmatory factor analysis and the advanced version of this confirmatory analysis is also termed as path analysis and uh, is SCM. Okay, so that is, uh, uh, I'm not going to discuss. Today, I will be discussing only on this exploratory factor analysis. Okay, so uh, there are uh, uh, certain uh, assumptions and notations for this. Uh, and uh, the assumptions uh, which uh, are there, uh, that is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, obvious. One assumption is that the mean vector, the mean of this, it will be represented by mean vector mu. Uh, the mat, mat, variance, covariance uh, of uh, x, uh, It is represented by sigma variance covariance matrix. Another thing uh, is very important that this, uh, on an average, the, the mean of uh, these factors, uh, if you'll measure, it will be zero. Expected value of the error term is also zero. And uh, the covariance of uh, this is a, uh, identity matrix means uh, they are independent and the covariance of uh, the error term it will be represented by psi and uh, covariance between uh, the factor and the error term it will be zero so these are the notations and assumption of the factor model uh, that is not uh, very much uh, uh, but I discussed the uh, orthogonal and the oblique uh, uh, factor analysis already. Now, uh, what actually uh, is being very much uh, important for uh, all of us to understand at this particular point of time is that, uh, that this, uh, As I read, I, as I've already written that this uh, X minus mu, uh, it is equal to so this is our uh, factor loading and uh, now if I will, I want to convert I want to convert it in the form of sigma. Now this sigma the is expected value of x minus mu and x minus mu transpose. This is the formula of sigma. So this sigma, if I will write it down here like this, so it will be nothing but expected value of x minus mu x minus mu transpose and if i will put the this value it means delta so i have substituted the, and after some uh, after some uh, uh, menu after some steps it will come out something like this Okay, so this is, uh, so uh, actually we use principal component method analysis to solve this equation. Okay, now what actually is happening is that in, in such situation, we are simply, we are simply Oh, yeah. Okay. 
T is transposed. T is transposed in the vector rotation. Now this. Now this is actually written in terms of these uh, factor loadings and the error term. Okay. So what? What do? What does um, I mean to say with this? Is that this sigma one one? is associated with this uh, factor over here and with this factor over here okay so what does it mean that this uh, uh, if i am saying that uh, the factor jth fact, jth uh, variable is there so it is measured in terms of sigma jj and it can be we can say break broken into two part one part which is explained by the factors and another part which is unexplained so this part which is explained by the factor it is termed as commonalities and this part which is not explained it is termed as unique or specific variability which is not explained by the factors okay so how these community communities are being captured through the data analysis that uh, part also uh, i'll be explaining to you in the practical example so what actually uh, up to now i have discussed is that you have got some observable variables and with the help of these unobservable variables you are trying to quantify you are trying to measure these uh, unobservable quantities and you have said that these are the factor loadings this lambda 1 when as i told you contribution of factor 1 on x1 contribution of uh, factor 2 on x1 and the contribution of factors these are represented by these uh, and similarly lambda p1 lambda p2 and lambda okay now if you will square all these and uh, sum over here so it will be represented by h1 square that is communities h1 square h2 square and hp square okay and here downside if i will say that it is q1 q2 and qm these are termed as eigen values okay in principal component analysis we'll use this eigen values method to find out this lambda 1 1 lambda 1 2 and lambda 1 p okay so which uh, these uh, notations with this uh, introduction uh, now what uh, i would like to say that this uh, factor analysis uh, quantifies uh, these uh, those construct with the help of the observable manifest variable now why uh, why this uh, is being very much important why this is uh, the lesser the information content the better the design okay means there are p observable quantity and you are uh, converting it into m unobservable quantity so the lesser the information content the better the design you know for example there is a remote uh, or there is a Uh, tv remote and in the tv remote there are lots of button okay lots of information are there so uh, 
that will lead you to a bit more confusion you know there is one two three lots of button and then in center volume up volume down lot of informations are there what you are what this is trying to this this is trying to convert it into a, a smaller uh, dimensional remote in which there is one by which you can increase or decrease the volume there is one by which you can uh, change the channel and there is one by which you can on and off the tv channel and there is one more button by which you can move to various uh, uh, various uh, portals of the channel so the lesser the information content the better the design for this also this factor analysis is very much important so factor analysis also it uh, use for dimension reduction okay and the very important thing is that uh, one more definition for factor analysis is that the purpose of factor analysis is to describe if possible the covariance relationship among many observable variable into few unobservable underlying random quantities called factor so now what i was discussing if you people might go through these definitions of factor analysis so you you will able to understand so what actually factor analysis do factor analysis tries to quantify hidden variables and because of this it is also used for dimension reduction okay now as i told you that uh, uh, we have got uh, this equation uh, so this is our variance covariance matrix so this is also observable and this uh, um, delta delta transpose this is factor loadings matrix and this is unobservable now with the help of these methods factor uh, component analysis principal factor method and maximum likelihood method we can estimate these uh, factor loadings okay but uh, this is uh, how we can do that this is uh, out of uh, scope of this lecture uh, the software will do this for us uh, i will uh, explain the how the software is going to estimate our uh, uh, factor loadings now the very important thing is that how we can think that whether these uh, observable quantities is uh, good for factor analysis okay so first uh, important thing you can create a correlation matrix okay if you will observe uh, so now the just find out the correlation matrix okay and see that if all the observations in the correlation matrix if uh, if maximum of them are more than 0.30 then you can then you can think of that uh, this is good for factor analysis okay because this sigma 11 sigma 22 and sigma pp this this is the variance of this but this sigma 12 means very means the correlation between sigma and one sigma 12 it should be more than 0.30 sigma uh, 13 it should be more than 0.30 if you observe that all these of all these quantities are more than 0.30 so this is a good this is a good uh, means this x1 x2 and xp this is a good uh, uh, data for doing the factor analysis so this is the first uh, observation by which uh, you can uh, go for this uh, factor analysis second uh, uh, 
test which usually we you can do is the uh, barlest sparsity test uh, in this we assume that uh, our uh, this uh, uh, correlation matrix is identity what does it mean it means that uh, this is a one 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 this our variance covariance matrix sigma it is one 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 and offside is very much close to zero so the null hypothesis is saying that this is i identity matrix i and alternative hypothesis is saying that this is not equal to y okay so this we test this and uh, with the help of uh, chi square statistics we can say whether we should proceed for factor analysis or not third one is this uh, kmo test uh, and uh, this uh, test actually also measures the sampling adequacy and this is and they propose that if this kmo test is uh, more than 0.9 so this is marvelous uh, for doing the factor analysis and if it is 0.80 it is meritorious 7 points uh, if it is middling and in the 60 it is mediocre and if it is uh, 50 or less than 50 then we should not go for doing the factor analysis so before pro proceeding or doing the factor analysis we should uh, observe all these uh, quantities to okay now another very important uh, uh, thing which is uh, how many factors in explore, exploratory factor analysis how many factors we should retain how to decide that okay so there is one criteria which is termed as eigen values criteria and uh, in this uh, eigen value criteria just uh, it is if the eigen values all the eigen values which are more than one that should be uh, taken into consideration another criteria is the percentage cumulative explained okay means uh, how much uh, uh, percentage of variability is being explained uh, uh, by this and third criteria is the screen plot or elbow criteria okay so uh, by these three technique we can decide that out of m factors how many factors we should discuss okay now let us take a example uh, so this uh, uh, example is actually uh, taken from johnson and wichen uh, uh, book so in this example uh, we have got uh, uh, five sub we have got six marks of six subject and what are those six subject is uh, gallic english history arithmetic algebra and geometry okay so these are the six uh, subjects and this is our uh, this rank correlation matrix okay so what actually this rank correlation matrix uh, is something why this is not written in the downside because uh, this uh, uh, sigma 1 1 is equal to yeah sigma 2 1 is equal to sigma 1 2 that's why whatever value 4.439 it is again here 0.439 can be written now the question is that you can see that uh, by this that most of the observations are more than 0 0.3 okay most of the observation most of these uh, values are more than 0 0.3 so a uh, few of them are uh, not but still uh, these this is not but most of them are more than 0 0.3 so this is a good data by which we can proceed for factor analysis but if all these observations are very much close to zero or if all these observations are less than uh, 0 0.3 then we should not proceed for doing factor analysis okay so now uh, we uh, just uh, uh, did uh, the things on the software and we find out this uh, uh, factor loadings that i told you that uh, this uh, uh, lambda 11 you, know, you can see that uh, this uh, lambda 11 you know, what is this uh, f1 f2 there are two factors and uh, how much is it, how much this is contributing to gallic so 
this is 0.533. So this is nothing but this is lambda 1 1. Okay. How much factor 1 is contributing to Gallic? And how much factor 2 is contributing to? So this is lambda 1 2. So this is what is being estimated. That is what I was discussing. Okay. Now, what is the importance? And uh, these are the communities. Community is nothing but uh, how much uh, these two factors are explaining the variability. So only 0.49 out of 100, only 49% are being explained by these two factors for this. Okay, so this is termed as communities. Now you can see in this particular factor loadings that uh, if Here you can see that what is you can observing that uh, these uh, quantities. So if I will, I will be just uh, try to make a chart of uh, this uh, factor loadings. Okay. So what I am trying to say is that. Uh, If this is my F1, okay, and uh, if this is my F2, okay. Now, what I'm trying to do is uh, that uh, this is my 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8. And here again, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.6. Now this 0 0.553 and 0 0.429. So 0 0.553 and 0 0.429. So first uh, Gallic will come here. And similarly, 0 0.568, 0 0.288. 0 0.568 and 0 0.288, uh, it will come something here. And then 0.392 and 0 0.450. So 0.3 will be somewhere here, and 0 0.450, it will be okay. And then uh, 0 0.740, it will be somewhere here, and minus 273. So if here it is minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.4. So Hmm. So last three factors, it will be sitting something like this. So now you can see that uh, from this, you can see that you can say that these three factors, and, uh, these top three, Gaelic, English, and history, they are very much close to each other. And similarly, these three factors, what? arithmetic algebra and geometry they are very much close to each other so obviously they, these three will be because of factor f1 and these three will be because of factor f2 and what is this factor f1 now the expert have to say what is this hidden factor so he will say that he it is his verbal ability And what is this factor two? It is his numeric ability. So now you can see with the help of that uh, matrix, how this uh, 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 factors are being uh, find out. Now, uh, what further uh, uh, analysis uh, that can be done with this is that, if you rotate this axis, if you rotate this axis by, if you are going to rotate this axis by theta, okay, you are going to rotate this axis by 
theta just a minute Sorry. Okay, if you are going to rotate this axis by theta, no, what? Just a minute. Now what I'm trying to say, if you'll rotate this axis by uh, say angle theta, okay. Now you can see that uh, what, so this rotation is actually termed as oblique rotation. O B oblique uh, rotation. Now if you'll rotate it by like this, so what will, what will happen? This is termed as factor rotation. And because of this, now you can see that uh, these factors are, uh, the values of these factors will be somewhat change. And uh, you can find out that this is uh, uh, far better than uh, the values of these three are more than these uh, uh, results. If you'll compare to the previous one, you can see that uh, 0 0.553 and 0 0.429, they are very much close to each other. 0.392, 0 0.450, they are very much close to each other. So it is very much uh, difficult to distinguish that uh, whether this is a factor loading on which factor it is loading more. But when you do the rotation here, uh, estimated rotated factor loading. So here you can say that this is somewhat considerably somewhat better than, and here it is contributing very low, low. So these three are, definitely are different factors. Okay, so uh, this is uh, actually termed as uh, orthogonal rotation. And uh, there is also uh, the term, which is also termed as oblique rotation in which we are not going to do the. So in the SPSS, you will find it with the help of Varimax rotation, Equimax and Quartimax. All these are under the orthogonal rotation. But if you are, if the rotation is not uh, of 90 degree, so it is termed as oblique rotation. Okay. So now uh, uh, with this, uh, I have already shared a uh, uh, data set with you and uh, I will be explaining uh, it with the SPSS software. Uh, the factor analysis now, whatever the uh, terms uh, which are being there. So first of all, I will be explaining the uh, data set and then uh, how to uh, do that into the SPSS. So uh, this data set I've already shared into the uh, chat box. Okay, just uh, if uh, somebody is uh, uh, difficult to find, I again, uh, I'm again going to share these uh, data set into the chat box, data one and data two. Uh, here to retry. I think I've opened it. That's why it is not sharing. Just, just a minute. Ah. Yes, now. So now what it is a, a data of women track records if uh, I open the data, it will be something like this. Uh, on the, the first column, you can see the name of the countries are there. Uh, and uh, then this X1 
X2, X3, X4, X5, X6 and X7. Now, what are these uh, X1, X2, X4, X5, X7? Um, uh, that is, uh, you see uh, this, uh, so this uh, X1 is actually uh, the 100 meter race and uh, how much time in second they are taking, okay. Similarly, this X2 is a time taken for 200 meter race in seconds. X3 is a time taken for 400 meter in seconds. And X4 is a time taken for 800 meter in minute. And X5 is a time taken for 1500 meter in minute. Similarly, X6 is a time taken for 3000 meter in minute and x7 is time taken for marathon in minute okay so uh, if i again uh, show you the data so uh, for the argentina this 11.61 second uh, 22.94 second for uh, 200 meter in second, 54.5 second for uh, 400. And similarly, 178 uh, is minute, 9.79 is minute. Uh, for uh, this X6 is uh, for 3000 meter. They are, so this is the measurement of the time taken by the woman of these different countries to uh, complete the race. Now, uh, we would like to do the factor analysis uh, with this and the exploratory factor analysis uh, in this. And uh, we want to see whether some factors are there or not. Okay. So for this, uh, what uh, I will do that I will open the SPSS. And uh, I will call this data into the SPSS. Okay. So what I will do that uh, I will go into the file, import data from the Excel and uh, Mm. Uh, why this data one is not showing that I have showed to you uh, this data one woman. Let me check. Hmm. So it's there, uh, data one. It's there. So it is a Microsoft Excel common CSV file. Okay. It is a CSV file. That's why it is not showing. So now what I will do is go import data and I will go to the CSV data and uh, drive the factor analysis data. Now it is showing the CSV file and open. Okay. So first line contains variable name okay just a minute it will Some problem is there. Just uh, again, file import data. 
from csv data this uh, open uh, how much is there advanced text wizard next finish why again it is not okay so uh, what i will do right now that uh, i will simply copy these uh, data set from here and uh, i will paste it into the go to the data view and uh, here i will paste it okay and uh, then uh, i will name it as uh, x1 x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 and x7 so this this is uh, my data set if i'll go to the data view this is this will this will look something like this and uh, now i want to uh, see what are the factors uh, because of which uh, such uh, uh, values are coming so for that i should go to the analyze and uh, then go to dimension reduction and in dimension reduction uh, this uh, factor uh, i will click and uh, i will select all these uh, factors because i have to uh, think and then uh, click on descriptives i want a univariate descriptive and uh, i told you that uh, i want these uh, correlation matrix i want kmo and barless test okay uh, then continue then uh, extraction uh, how much uh, by which method uh, i want to do the factor analysis so there is principal component uh, maximum likelihood uh, principal axis factor so i will just select principal component method uh i want to display the screen plot how i want to extract i want to extract based on the eigen values so all the eigen values which whose are greater than 1 if i already know how many factors are i there are only two factors so by this i have to put two but right now i am just clicking on this based on eigen values and then click continue then rotation so first of all i have just uh, uh, i will not do any kind of rotation i have discussed this very max rotation in the my slide that if i rotate uh, with the 90 degree but right now i am uh, not rotating uh, uh, this uh, i'm just uh, first of all and then uh, display the loading plots continue now scores uh, whether i want the scores uh, as variable uh so that also can be done but uh, right now i'm not uh, and what are the options so these are the options that how you can tackle the uh, missing value okay so with uh, these if i will click okay so i'll be getting the results in the output like this now what does this uh, output uh, is simply displaying so the first uh, um 
so this first is actually uh, is uh, the mean of uh, this x1 x2 x3 i what is x1 if you remember this is the uh, time taken to complete the 100 meter in second and uh, similarly what is this x7 this is the time taken to complete the marathon in minutes so the average is 173 and here at the average is 11.6 second for uh, completing the 200 meter it is 23.57 second okay and this is the standard deviation of uh, these uh, factors now if we'll move to the correlation matrix uh, you can see that uh, most of the factors are more than 3 so it is a good uh, data to go for the factor analysis okay now what is uh, this uh, kmo uh, test i already told you that uh, this uh, kmo if it is a uh, more than 0.90 so it is a really very good model and barless test for sparsity i already told you in this case the null hypothesis is that this matrix is a identity matrix so this is rejected okay so all these uh, these two models are suggesting that uh, doing a factor analysis on this data is a good thing okay now communalities so the uh factors uh, they are uh, explaining uh, 78% of the variability in x1 okay so most of them are explaining more than 70% variability and but only x5 the factors are only explaining around 56% of the variability now if we'll move to the how much uh, factors that we should uh, consider so this is screen plot is uh, something that you can say elbow plot so only two factors uh, you can think of uh, considering and rest of them are uh, so because at this elbow you can see this is turning like this so you can uh, consider of uh, taking uh, care of the two factors but here uh, they have just uh, gone for this uh, one factor because it is turned one over here on only one factor is there which uh, eigen values is more than 1 here you can see the eigen value of this factor is less than 1 okay so they are saying that only one factor is there now what does we can do from here that uh, because only one hidden factor is there so this is not a uh, uh, very great uh, thing to do so what i can do here that again i will go to the analyze and uh, go to the dimension reduction factor and uh, extraction and here in extraction i will keep two okay i have change uh, how many factors i want to extract so instead of uh, going with the this criteria i can value is more than one i am saying that uh, i want at least two factors so again i will click continue and then click okay so now the again descriptive statistics and correlation matrix and kmo and barlett test all these are explaining the same thing but here instead of taking only one factor now i am uh, taking the two factors and uh, these two factors are explaining 80% of variability into the data and if i'll go to the this uh, screen plot you can see that this x1 x2 and x3 they are very much uh, close to each other and rest x4 x5 x6 uh, x7 they are close to each other so obviously this x1 x2 x3 and uh, there are two factors uh, which are uh, playing a role over here and uh, now you can think of what are these factors which are uh, uh, distinguishing between these uh, two so if if you remember this x1 x2 x3 they are uh, very fast uh, speeding uh, kind of thing means x1 is 100 meter x2 is 200 meter and uh, x3 is 400 meter so these three are something which are very fast running skill okay so the players who are of very fast running so because of that uh, the marks are coming like this but this uh, x6 x7 x4 they are uh, long running skills 
okay because they are 800 meter 1500 meter 3000 meter and marathon so these are wrong wrong running skills so the marks of the players or you can say the measurement of the, of the players are so you can see how beautifully this factor analysis have uh, divided the whole set of seven factors into these two hidden factors of the players again uh, now i will go to the analyze and go to the dimension reduction factors and i will go to the rotation uh, why i am going to the rotation because you can see that uh, these uh, are very much uh, if i'll go to the very max rotation okay and i will continue uh, then click okay so this will now show me uh, this uh, very max rotation like this okay so you can see that uh, this is the component x1 x2 x3 are now uh, sitting over here and these uh, factors are sitting over here and this community is this is 8.841.862.815 they they these factor loadings of the rotated are uh, this and for this uh, 0.6 again this is a uh, uh, 0.617 0.229 0.492 and 0.469 so these are very much close to each other so you can see that uh, these are the results when you have rotated it by very max uh, again uh, if you are not satisfied with that you can uh, just uh, look at uh, other uh, uh, rotation but there is i told you one is the uh this uh, oblique rotation and i will click continue and then click okay so this oblique rotation is uh, not equal to 90 degree so you can see that now this uh, are very much close to here and so the factor loadings will uh, be uh, different as you are going to do the different kind of rotation okay uh similarly uh if uh, uh, you can see the another data set uh which are here data 2 okay so uh this data 2 is uh, something which is uh, explaining about uh, uh, these factors so one is our outgoing social hard working beautiful warm hearted and helpful what actually the meaning of this data set hai na so what is the research question for doing the factor analysis uh, a possible research question might be can different personality traits such as outgoing uh, curious sociable or helpful be grouped into personality types such as uh constituentness extravagated and aggregable okay so can these uh, variables uh, can be converted into these uh, things okay so these are the measurable uh, quantity with the help of some uh, likert scale okay so uh, how it can be done so again uh, i will go to the file import data set uh, from the excel and uh, this is data 2 i will open it okay okay uh, now this is the the most important uh, thing about uh, doing the factor analysis that the, your data should be on the scale or it can go to the ordinal but it should be on the scale matlab it should be uh, numeric Uh, it should be of scale because uh, calculating the mean you you can see that we are uh, uh, doing all the calculation with the help of the mean and the variance and mean and variance are valid for only scale data set so that is uh, one thing we should be taken care of and again going to the factor and i will select uh, all these uh, variables and again i will click descriptive uh, okay kmo and barlet test and coefficient continue extraction 
uh, unrotated factor solution principal component and again based on the eigen values i will select this then for the rotation i first of all i will do not uh, do any kind of rotation i will select loading plots scores uh, uh, okay i will not uh, save the scores and then in option so continue now again i will click okay so for this data set this is the mean of uh, these uh, uh, variables which are under consideration uh, you can see that uh, in uh, correlation matrix uh, uh, some of them are uh, uh, 0.583 less than 3 and you can see that uh, um, many of them are less than 3 so because of this also you can see uh, that uh, this uh, KMO test uh, it is uh, not uh, less than 0 0.50, and also uh, the Barlett Spirity test is very much close to the significance level. So I can say that this data is not uh, very much good for uh, doing the factor analysis uh, because of uh, these results. But still, if you want to uh, do, you can proceed with. Uh, but the statistics suggest that this is not uh, good. The reason may be because of the less sample size, we have only 20 observations. Okay. Now, if we'll go to the, uh, this uh, component matrix, so you can see that how these, uh, there are three components. So there are three factors which are being there. The first factor is actually have high marks with uh, outing and social. The second factor have uh, more marks 0 0.793, 0 0.659 for a hard, hard working and dutiful. And the third factor have more marks with uh, this, you can say more factor loading with this warm hearted and helpful. Okay, so clearly uh, this is indicates that uh, all these uh, observable quantities can be reduced to the three components. Okay. And uh, uh, this is a three dimensional plot component one component component three so this uh, social and outgoing are close to each other hard working and dutiful are close to each other and helpful and warm hearted are close to each other and you can see also in this diagram that this out outgoing and sociable are uh, extra virgin trait of the person hard working and dutiful is his consistency and warm hearted and helpful is his aggregableness okay so that is what uh, from my side now the session is open for question and answer sir for the first one the problem that you have shared what would be the research question like here we are grouping the things what would yeah. be the research question uh, for the, the first research, problem? Uh, the research question is that uh, you can see that uh, uh, these are this is the data set uh, which I was dealing with, and uh, uh, you want to see that whether the uh, uh, speed or whether these records uh, are something uh, is a hidden factor because of which uh, such values are coming. Okay, you can uh, uh, you can see from the results that uh, in result x one, x two, x three, they are very much close to each other. So these three factors are associated with speed of the ladies and rest these are associated with endurance of the uh, woman uh, day because this is the uh, data on the woman track records how much time they are taking in argentina australia austria india belgium all these are countries and how much uh, the, this is the record of the woman in these country countries so the question is that uh, whether these uh, track records uh, are coming what are the inherent uh, what are the hidden uh, characteristics because of which such records are coming okay so this is the uh, this is the idea and uh, we can we have find out that this x1 x2 x3 are contributing the speed of the woman and x4 x5 x6 x7 are contributing the endurance of the uh, woman track records so that is what uh, and this is an exploratory factor analysis. We are exploring that what are the hidden factors. So the PI or the uh, that person is very much, uh, uh, he should answer that because in the results you can see, uh, I'm simply getting the results like this. Okay, here, here I'm getting the results like this. The first result which I got, 
it is the result so it is simply saying x1 x2 x3 are close to each other and these factors are close to each other now it is the duty of the investigator to find out why these x1 x2 x3 are very much close to each other because of some hidden factor what is the name of that hidden factor that he have to decide because that is actually the unmeasurable quantity because of which such is such parts are coming out like this okay that is it is establishing an association between these kind of if these factors are it is doing doing things ma'am it is first of all it is reducing the dimension mm -hmm. out of these uh, seven it is reducing the dimension to the two dimension okay and another thing it is doing that it is finding out two factors so one factor i am just named speed of the woman speed of the woman track record this is mm -hmm. the speed in your how much speed they can do and this is the endurance endurance is very difficult to measure so these factors will measure the endurance of the woman yeah so this is uh, this means this is a hypothesis of the pi no no sir this is he he explored and he find out that x1 x2 x3 are very much close to each other no unmeasurable unmeasurable things you know that you have to you have to find out what yes, is common yes yes that is that now what are the things because of which x1 x2 x3 are very much close to each other so yes. just i named it uh, because this is these three are associated with the very fast running because they have to run very fast to 100 meter 200 meter 400 meter okay but rest are uh, rest are uh, endurance means the who can run fast not only and who can run fast up to a very long time so that's why this is another trait they are coming close to each other so, so what yes so what should be the uh, parlet sparsity value and when do we go for rotation Uh, you can see that when uh, these uh, things are very much close to you, when uh, you can see that uh, here these uh, the difference between these two are not uh, the, for example here seven five three four seven eight eight three nine so in this case there is no need to go for this uh, rotation because it is clearly indicating that these three are negative and uh, these three are. Uh, these three are positive but the difference between these are quite uh, a large so there is no need for going for this uh, rotation and here also in the screen plot also you can see that they are uh, very much uh, 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 close to each other in such case we there is no need to go for the rotation i just illustrated uh, what will happen if you will go for the rotation okay i just illustrated you can see if i go for this very max rotation so the the values all things are coming positive now this is uh, this will come something like this uh, around in the range of 8 and all these will come around in the range now you can see you cannot distinguish between x4 okay x4 is what x4 is 800 meter so it will come in both okay speed may be are it is coming in the speed also it is coming into the endurance also got it excuse me sir so it is the same uh, group of people you were taking to the that like a 100 meter short run and uh, uh, high distance run so it's automatically uh, my question is that it is the same group of people like you are taking yes, in this yes. uh, different is. countries it is the same yes. um, group of no, people no, you, you can you can you, this is the track record of the argentina woman how much what is the track record of these seven kind of uh, events what is the track record in australia what is the track record in austria okay this is this is something like so country, can, a country versus country it is not like that okay, it is uh... no 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 this is something that uh, these are the factors i want to i told you in my slide that these are the observable quantities with the help of these observable quantity i want to identify unobservable quantities so there are two unobservable quantity f1 and f2 f1 is the speed endurance of the woman uh, f1 is the speed of the woman track record and f2 is the endurance of the woman track record okay so That one more doubt here when yes. grouping these uh, means these factors x5 seems to be a outlier like but it is a 1500 meter so 
no no how it will be explained on the basis of uh, any two factors or any two uh, things that are contributing to it uh, how you can say this x5 is a outlier uh, means not not exactly an outlier sir but it is not grouping in with x1 x2 x3 and neither with x4 x6 and x7 x uh, let me let oh, that is that is what you can see here here here, here you can see that this no this if in the the previous uh, rotation you can say this yes this x5 yeah is it is not your yes you are correct that this x5 is not uh, going to associate with this uh, x1 x2 x3 x4 x so you can also uh, think of that uh, how much distance you can uh, 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 that's why i did the factor rotation okay in the factor rotation again the, they uh, it, it is again at a very far distance then i did the oblique rotation also into that mm -hmm. and in the oblique again, rotation it, it moves to uh, a bit more far away so yeah. yes you can say that this x5 is something different factor what is the name of that factor uh, that uh, you have to decide that the has to be decided okay yes sir, so sir, can it be means just for speed and endurance Yes, you can. You can, you can say. You can say that it is a. It's, it is a measurement of speed. It is can be speed and endurance. But again, combination the of both. Yeah, okay. again, you can say that this X four is eight hundred meter. So mm. it is also a speed and endurance kind of thing. Okay. Now uh, uh, this data is something like this. The results are coming out like this. So explaining uh, these things uh, in the paper. Uh, is become quite tricky. So it at mm -hmm. this particular point time, statistics is saying this. Now you have to interpret why such results is coming. What are the factors because of which such result is coming? That is the beauty of factor analysis. Thanks. Okay. Sir, what is the significance of taking uh, eigenvalue greater than one? Uh, I am not saying that uh, this. Uh, this is the because uh, you can see that this is one of the uh, thing that because of which it is explaining more percentage if the eigen values is high if it is more than one it means uh, this uh, uh, this factor is going to explain more uh, you can see that uh, the eigen values is uh, 0.5 uh, so the percent it is explaining 72 if the eigen value is uh, around points less than one, so only eight percent. If it is more than one, so the percentage which is explained by the eigen value is somewhat higher. But if it is less than one, the percentage which is explained by it, it is somewhat lower. So that's why usually it is uh, said that if the eigen value is more than one, so it will be good to take uh, that factor into account. Thank you, sir. Sir, one more question. Uh, sir, can you tell me the significance of rotation, very mixed rotation and oblique rotation? I told you na, that uh, sometime what happened when you can see that uh, distinguished between these two factors, uh, just 0 0.449, 0 0.551. So if we rotate it and clearly identify that these three are together and these three are not together. So at that particular point of time, we rotate it. I also tell you in my slides uh, that uh, when we rotated it by 90 degree, and the difference between the components are quite uh, clear. So that's why we do this uh, very max rotation. Thanks. Sir, reducing the number of factors is decided by us. Is it, sir? Uh, reducing the number of factors uh, is... Uh, uh, I told you that uh, there are three ways. One way is uh, just uh, go for this uh, screen plot and see where the elbow is uh, there. Another is see the how uh, this uh, the eigen value if it is more than one. So by this uh, up to which uh, factor we should go. Uh, this is the way by how we can decide uh, how much factor we should retain. So we can take more than two factors also. Yes, uh, there are three. There are three ways by which uh, we can decide. One is that up to what percentage of uh, uh, variability we would like to explain. If we would like to explain up to ninety percent, so in this case we should go up to four component. Okay, we want to explain ninety-five percent variability of the data. So for this we need to go up to the four uh, factors. 
okay so that is one criteria another criteria is this uh, uh, that uh, how much uh, that this uh, uh, now another criteria is this uh, more than one or third criteria is the screen plot so these three criteria are there by which we decide how many factors we should retain before doing the factor analysis if you say that i want 90% of the variability explained so for this you should go up to four factor but you say no only i will uh, take those factors for which the eigen uh, vector is more than one eigen value is more than one so in this case you have to go with only one factor okay but the screen plot is saying that elbow is taking up care of the two factors so you say that no i should go with the two factors so there are different criteria and uh, you can proceed with any one of these so one more thing uh, without yeah. rotation when the plot was constructed hmm. it was written as component plot and the axes were like component 1 and component 2 hmm. so what is this component 1 and component this, this, 2 these exactly are mean? this is the factor 1 and this is the factor 2 okay this is nothing but you can see that this this is the this is the value and this is plotted over here yeah this is the by plot of this uh, these are the factor loadings that lambda 1 1 lambda 1 2 were, that was i was explaining now mm -hmm. yes this yes. values and this is by plotted over here okay okay and these factor 1 and factor 2 that investigator has to decide yes 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 okay. excuse me sir yes so, uh, while importing data in spss Yes, for yes. factor analysis can you uh, once again uh, tell us the important steps uh, how we should proceed because uh, i saw you uh, click many uh, this uh, analysis part of I means what we want to i mean those things is little confusing uh, so can you once important uh, steps which are compulsory to be clicked yes, go, go to the file yeah and open okay okay and then in open go to the data now yes. you have to decide what is your type of data whether your data is already in the spss format or your data is in the form of the excel or your data is form of the csv or text or your data is in the form of stata what kind of your data is if your data is in the form of the excel click on excel and then by clicking over here go to that particular folder in which you have kept your data and then select select that data and then click open when you click open it will show the window will show you like this if you'll see the preview of the data over here if you see everything is fine just click okay so your data will be loaded so regarding the factor analysis part yes yes uh, factor analysis um, after so this again, after again you go to the analyze and then go to the dimension reduction and go to the factor select all these uh, data over here okay from this step onward yeah yeah now these steps actually i wanted yeah then go to the then go to the descriptive and the univariate descriptive then for correlation matrix i told you you have to select this for how here, to decide this which one means only co yes only these, only these two i told you na okay for, by this by this you have to decide if all the values are more than 0.3 it means it is good for uh, doing the factor analysis Okay. if uh, kmo test uh, i told you that if uh, values are more than 0.9 it is a very good uh, thing to do the factor analysis if the barless test of asperities is uh, coming significant it is a uh, good to do the factor analysis this is a primarily uh, test if these values are not coming good you should not proceed further for explaining the factor analysis because the data is not good for doing the factor analysis then click continue and yes. then extraction extraction you can see by which method you want to extract so just select principal component method and then select the screen plot how by which method you want to explain so based on eigen value eigen value is greater than 1 or you want fixed number of factors and you want at least two or three number of factors so first of all just click on this then click continue then rotation you want to rotate you want to rotate the axis by 90 degree or you do not want any kind of rotation and then click on the loading plots continue okay. and then in this course yes. you have to do nothing and in options you have to do nothing and just click okay okay so okay. by this the results will come 
Thank okay. you. Thank you very so, much. So, uh, sir, sir, we are running late, so can we uh, wind up the session? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So, so, participants, if you have any queries, you can write uh, directly to Dr. Anu. Uh, service with all uh, with BS uh, in the uh, so you have email ID. So uh, okay, so I think uh, more of the most of the things are covered. Yeah, so, so please share your email in the chat box. Okay, okay. So what? Uh, uh, I hope this yeah, session so, yeah. is helpful for you and uh, thanks a lot for giving the opportunity to share my ideas on the factor analysis. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your very valuable session. And uh, thank you. Thank you all. Thanks to all the participants.